Medieval Latin, Wikipedia article audio. Medieval Latin was the form of Latin used in the Middle Ages, primarily as a medium of scholarly exchange, as the liturgical language of Chalcedonian Christianity and the Roman Catholic Church, and as a language of science, literature, law and administration. Despite the clerical origin of many of its authors, medieval Latin should not be confused with ecclesiastical Latin. There is no real consensus on the exact boundary where late Latin ends and medieval Latin begins. Some scholarly surveys begin with the rise of early ecclesiastical Latin in the middle of the 4th century, others around 500 and still others with the replacement of written Late Latin by written Romance languages starting around the year 900. Influences Christian Latin Vulgar Latin Changes in vocabulary, syntax, and grammar Syntax Orthography Medieval Latin Literature Important Medieval Latin Authors 4th-5th Centuries 6th-8th Centuries 9th Century 10th Century 11th Century 12th Century 13th Century 14th Century Literary Movements Works Online repositories Notes Medieval Latin had an enlarged vocabulary, which freely borrowed from other sources. It was heavily influenced by the language of the Vulgate, which contained many peculiarities alien to classical Latin that resulted from a more or less direct translation from Greek and Hebrew. The peculiarities mirrored the original not only in its vocabulary but also in its grammar and syntax. Greek provided much of the technical vocabulary of Christianity. The various Germanic languages spoken by the Germanic tribes, who invaded southern Europe, were also major sources of new words. Germanic leaders became the rulers of parts of the Roman Empire that they conquered and words from their languages were freely imported into the vocabulary of law. Other more ordinary words were replaced by coinages from vulgar Latin or Germanic sources because the classical words had fallen into disuse. Latin was also spread to areas such as Ireland and Germany, where Romance languages were not spoken, and which had never known Roman rule. Works written in the lands where Latin was a learned language with no relation to the local vernacular, also influenced the vocabulary and syntax of medieval Latin. Since subjects like science and philosophy, including argumentation theory and ethics, were communicated in Latin, the Latin vocabulary developed for them is the source of a great many technical words in modern languages. English words like abstract, subject, communicate, matter, probable and their cognates in other European languages generally have the meanings given to them in medieval Latin. The influence of vulgar Latin was also apparent in the syntax of some medieval Latin writers, although classical Latin continued to be held in high esteem and studied as models for literary compositions. The high point of the development of medieval Latin as a literary language came with the Carolingian Renaissance, a rebirth of learning kindled under the patronage of Charlemagne, King of the Franks. Alcuin was Charlemagne's Latin secretary and an important writer in his own right, his influence led to a rebirth of Latin literature and learning after the depressed period following the final disintegration of the authority of the Western Roman Empire. Although it was simultaneously developing into the Romance languages, Latin itself remained very conservative, as it was no longer a native language and there were many ancient and medieval grammar books to give one standard form. On the other hand, 
strictly speaking there was no single form of medieval Latin. Every Latin author in the medieval period spoke Latin as a second language, with varying degrees of fluency and syntax, grammar and vocabulary were often influenced by an author's native language. This was especially true beginning around the 12th century, after which the language became increasingly adulterated. Late medieval Latin documents written by French speakers tend to show similarities to medieval French grammar and vocabulary, those written by Germans tend to show similarities to German, etc. For instance, rather than following the classical Latin practice of generally placing the verb at the end, medieval writers would often follow the conventions of their own native language instead. Whereas Latin had no definite or indefinite articles, medieval writers sometimes used forms of unis as an indefinite article, and forms of ile as a definite article or even quidem as something like an article. Unlike classical Latin, where se was the only auxiliary verb, medieval Latin writers might use habira as an auxiliary, similar to constructions in Germanic and Romance languages. The accusative and infinitive construction in classical Latin was often replaced by a subordinate clause introduced by quad or chia. This is almost identical, for example, to the use of K in similar constructions in French. In every age from the late 8th century onwards, there were learned writers who were familiar enough with classical syntax to be aware that these forms and usages were wrong and resisted their use. Thus the Latin of a theologian like St. Thomas Aquinas or of an erudite clerical historian such as William of Tyre tends to avoid most of the characteristics described above, showing its period in vocabulary and spelling alone. The features listed are much more prominent in the language of lawyers, physicians, technical writers, and secular chroniclers. However the use of quat to introduce subordinate clauses was especially pervasive and is found at all levels. Medieval Latin had ceased to be a living language and was instead a scholarly language of the minority of educated men in medieval Europe used in official documents more than for everyday communication. That resulted in two major features of medieval Latin compared with classical Latin. First, many authors attempted to show off their knowledge of classical Latin by using rare or archaic constructions, sometimes anachronistically. Second, many lesser scholars had a limited grasp of proper Latin or were increasingly influenced by vulgar Latin, which was mutating into the Romance languages. Many striking differences between classical and medieval Latin are found in orthography. Perhaps the most striking difference is that medieval manuscripts used a wide range of abbreviations by means of superscripts, special characters etc., for instance the letters N and S were often omitted and replaced by a diacritical mark above the preceding or following letter. Apart from this, some of the most frequently occurring differences are as follows. Clearly many of these would have been influenced by the spelling, and indeed pronunciation, of the vernacular language, and thus varied between different European countries. These orthographical differences were often due to changes in pronunciation or, as in the previous example, morphology, which authors reflected in their writing. By the 16th century, Erasmus complained that speakers from different countries were unable to understand each other's form of Latin. The gradual changes in Latin did not escape the notice of contemporaries. Petrarch, writing in the 14th century, complained about this linguistic decline, which helped fuel his general dissatisfaction with his own era. The corpus of medieval Latin literature encompasses a wide range of texts, including such diverse works as sermons, hymns, hagiographical texts, travel literature, histories, epics, and lyric poetry.
The first half of the 5th century saw the literary activities of the great Christian authors Jerome and Augustine of Hippo, whose texts had an enormous influence on theological thought of the Middle Ages, and of the latter's disciple Prosper of Aquitaine. Of the later 5th century and early 6th century, Sidonius Apollinaris and Enodius, both from Gaul, are well known for their poems, as is Venantius Fortunatus. This was also a period of transmission, the Roman patrician Boethius translated part of Aristotle's logical corpus, thus preserving it for the Latin West, and wrote the influential literary and philosophical treatise De Consolationi Philosophiae. Cassiodorus founded an important library at the monastery of Vivarium near Squillace where many texts from antiquity were to be preserved. Isidore of Seville collected all scientific knowledge still available in his time into what might be called the first encyclopedia, the Etymologia. Gregory of Tours wrote a lengthy history of the Frankish kings. Gregory came from a Gallo-Roman aristocratic family, and his Latin, which shows many aberrations from the classical forms, testifies to the declining significance of classical education in Gaul. At the same time, good knowledge of Latin and even of Greek was being preserved in monastic culture in Ireland and was brought to England and the European mainland by missionaries in the course of the 6th and 7th centuries, such as Columbanus who founded the monastery of Babio in northern Italy. Ireland was also the birthplace of a strange poetic style known as Hesperic Latin. Other important insular authors include the historian Gildas and the poet Aldhelm. Benedict Biscop founded the monastery of Wearmouth Jarrow and furnished it with books which he had taken home from a journey to Rome and which were later used by Bede to write his ecclesiastical history of the English people. Many medieval Latin works have been published in the series Petrologia Latina, Corpus Scriptorum Ecclesiasticorum Latinorum and Corpus Christianorum. Until 75 BC, Old Latin 75 BC 200 AD, Classical Latin 200-900, Late Latin 900-1300, Medieval Latin 1300-1500, Renaissance Latin 1500-present, New Latin 1900-present, Contemporary Latin Word order usually tended towards that of the vernacular language of the author, not the artificial and polished word order of classical Latin. Conversely, an erudite scholar might attempt to show off by intentionally constructing a very complicated sentence. Because Latin is an inflected language, it is technically possible to place related words at opposite ends of a paragraph-long sentence and owing to the complexity of doing so, it was seen by some as a sign of great skill, typically, prepositions are used much more frequently for greater clarity, instead of using the ablative case alone. Further, in classical Latin the subject of a verb was often left implied, unless it was being stressed, vidit equals he sees. For clarity, Medieval Latin more frequently includes an explicit subject, is vidit equals he sees without necessarily stressing the subject, various changes occurred in vocabulary, and certain words were mixed into different declensions or conjugations. Many new compound verbs were formed. Some words retained their original structure but drastically changed in meaning. Onomocitus specifically means wrath in medieval Latin while in classical Latin, it generally referred to high spirits, excited spirits of any kind, owing to heavy use of biblical terms, there was a large influx of new words borrowed from Greek and Hebrew and even some grammatical influences. That obviously largely occurred among priests and scholars, not the laity. In general, 
it is difficult to express abstract concepts in Latin, as many scholars admitted. For example, Plato's abstract concept of the truth had to be expressed in Latin as what is always true. Medieval scholars and theologians, translating both the Bible and Greek philosophers into Latin out of the Koine and Classical Greek, cobbled together many new abstract concept words in Latin. Following the Carolingian reforms of the 9th century, Carolingian minuscule was widely adopted, leading to a clear differentiation between capital and lowercase letters, a partial or full differentiation between V and U, and between J and I, the diphthong AE is usually collapsed and simply written as E, for example, Puli might be written Pul. The same happens with the diphthong OE, for example in Pina, Oedipus, from Pona, Oedipus. This feature is already found on coin inscriptions of the 4th century. Conversely, an original E in classical Latin was often represented by AE or OE, also reflected in English spellings such as fetus, because of a severe decline in the knowledge of Greek in loan words and foreign names from or transmitted through Greek, Y and I might be used more or less interchangeably, Isidorus, Egyptus, from Isidorus, Egyptus. This is also found in pure Latin words, Osseus appears as Osseus and Silva as Silva, this last being a form which survived into the 18th century and so became embedded in modern botanical Latin, H might be lost, so that Habira becomes Aubrey, or Mii becomes Mi, or Mii may be written Michi, indicating that the H had come to be pronounced as K or perhaps KH. This pronunciation is not found in classical Latin, the loss of H in pronunciation also led to the addition of H in writing where it did not previously belong, especially in the vicinity of R, such as Corona for Corona, a tendency also sometimes seen in classical Latin, TI before a vowel is often written as CI, so that Divitii becomes Divitii, Tertius becomes Tertius. Vidium Visium, the combination MN might have another plosive inserted, so that alumnus becomes alumnus, somnus somnus. Single consonants were often doubled, or vice versa, so that tranquilitas becomes tranquilitas and Africa becomes Africa, syncopation became more frequent, six, especially in verbs in the perfect tense, might be lost so that novice becomes nasi.